I can't visualize. Oh my goodness. What are we going to do, Mike? Dealing with aphantasia. Mm. It's a rare condition. And a lot of people come to hypnotists and therapists and to our trainings and say, I can't visualize. Well, most of the time, that isn't accurate. All right. So it's a, like Mike said, it's often a complaint that we hear as hypnosis trainers that, well, we're going to be asking people to visualize stuff or imagine things in trance. And so if people say, but I can't, I can't visualize, visualize right. how do we handle that? So right. and we this wanna, happens with self-hypnosis as well. That's it. That's This is the thing. We're talking here for an audience that is either a hypnotist working with a client that might have an issue with image, imagine, imagination, imagination. Yeah. Imagination and imagery. Yeah, no, imagine it. no, we'll yeah. keep going. We're not, not editing joking. anything out. <laughs> or if you're doing self-hypnosis and we give you instructions like, okay, go into a trance and imagine X and Y and Z or whatever it is. If you are having trouble visualizing aphantasia, as we call it. Or aphantasia. Aphantasia. Is that, which is the right pronunciation? Uh, either one. Either one. Okay. So we either we want to we want to give you some ideas on how to deal with this, how to solve them. So no, yeah. Hmm. So fortunately, real aphantasia, aphantasia is very, very rare. It's only maybe one to three percent of the population actually have this, according to some research. And the rest of the time, I would say, we would say it's a misunderstanding right. of visualization. And that I think is worthy of some time here. So yeah. Some people think of visualization <laughs> like what? It has to look clear and vivid as in it's real be, life. If I'm visualizing our studio, as though it's just as though I'm looking at it with every detail, crystal clear yeah. and just the same as reality. As if it's a movie coming from the most modern iPhone with mm. 4K resolution or whatever it is, <laughs> all these vibrant colors and sharp details. But most of the time it mm. isn't. In reality, very few people have that ability to visualize to that extent, to that degree. Exactly. So hmm. can we do a little example here? Sure, Chris. Um, Close your eyes for a moment. Okay. I'd like you to visualize one of your daughters and describe her to me. Okay. Um, just because this morning. So long blonde hair, big smile, um, just just shining tall. Yeah. Okay. So I, come, I can see her right come now. Back. Now, okay. my question is, oh, how, wow. how did you actually do that? Did you have a checklist in your mind that you've made? Oh, if anyone asks me what my daughter looks like, I must remember to say she's tall. She's got blonde hair. Like, of course not. No, yeah. of course not. So in reality, it, I wasn't actually seeing my daughter. I was, I, I had a, I've been doing this a lot most of my life. So well, I, have, your I daughter. have a pretty good mental representation of okay. it, but it, it wasn't like a picture or a movie or anything. And there wasn't sharp detail. In fact, the detail would only exist for the moment that I thought about it. And then the detail faded away. All right. And I obviously wasn't looking at a real person. It was just imagination. So Right. So yeah, this, I, you're visualizing based on your visual memory and all of this in your visual cortex in the back of your head. Now, this is something that you do all the time. If you see somebody you haven't seen in a long time, you still know it's them because you've mm -hmm. got an internal picture you're making a comparison with. Yeah. And in this case, this is what we call visual recall. So I obviously have seen my daughter many times in my life. So I know what she looks like. and I'm not making up a new image. I am recalling based on memory. But let's say I was to say to you, Mike, you like to cook. I do. If you were going to open a restaurant called Shea Mandel, what would it look it like? Hmm. What would it look like? Yeah. What would um, Shea Mandel look like? Oh, I, I don't see it as fine dining. More of a bistro kind mm -hmm. of thing. Nice round tables. Pretty cozy place. Maybe a fireplace. Um, waiters or waitresses all wearing black. Like very trendy looking. But yeah, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm getting a sense of it right away. So it's interesting, right? Mike has never... Uh, to the best of my knowledge, have you ever thought about that before? I I've never run a kind restaurant. Of a random no. question. Right? <laughs> no. So it, you're asking a person to construct a visual representation of what something might look like. It doesn't actually exist. He's never necessarily thought about it before. No, but I haven't. Was it a real image or movie, or were you? What there was, was it like in your mind? That I like saw the wait staff, and mm. I thought, oh yeah, they're all in black, black aprons. And it, it looked really cool. But that was just coming out spontaneously. I'm not seeing it like I'm seeing this freaking desk in front of me. So it's not super crystal clear right. or sharp or anything like that. All right. So what are we going to do now if a client says that they can't visualize? Well, one of the first things you can do, and I've used this in our class, is say to the person, if you could visualize, what would it be like? And very often they'll start describing what they're visual. Well, you know, there'd be sort of a framework around it and I'd see things and they're pointing in the air and they're visualizing. They just don't realize they're visualizing at that time. That exact thing happened. I remember years ago we were teaching mindscaping 
and you had just finished explaining what, you, very what you just said. Couple of minutes go by, and this fellow Anthony walks into the class. He's a little bit late, and he's he's standing at the back. And we just finished wrapping up, and he, he says, in, "Yeah, what do I do if I can't visualize?" And you you turned him and you said, "Well, what would it be like if you could?" And his eyes went up, and he said, "Well," and he started answering you and pointing to what things that would be very close. I'd see an image exactly what I just said to the class, and everybody's laughing. Everyone burst he's out no laughing. Why we explained it to him to, of course, maintain right. rapport because that's important. So. One of the ways that you can answer this is just, well, if you could visualize, what would it be like? Right. That's i.e. evidence criteria. Which leads to it. the second one. Tell the person, pretend you're visualizing and just go with it. Yeah. Because if you pretend you're visualizing doing an NLP uh, process or hypnosis or whatever, you get exactly the same results as if yes. you are visualizing. And you can pre-frame it for them if you want and say, it's not expected to be a crystal clear movie on your iPhone or whatever it is. It's... Just whatever your brain gives you, pretend you're right. visualizing and just go with it. So remember that for self-hypnosis, you'll also get better by doing this more often. So right. basically pretend that you can do it and, and practice, 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 practice. Pretending. Yeah. So that's what you do if you're using this for self-hypnosis. If you're a hypnotherapist, and you're working with clients, then just use the tips that we gave you here. Now, if you are looking for more information, more training, we recommend that you join the Mike Mandel Hypnosis Academy. We'll make sure there's a link under this video in the description. We are Mike Mandel and Chris Thompson. And we run Mike Mandel Hypnosis. And we think you will love it. So check it out in the description. And while you're here, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and then ring that bell like that, just like that. So you'll always be notified of our latest videos. Yeah. Thanks again. And, and good, good night. night.